All right, so here in Maya, what we need to do is import some of those textures in. First off, I'm going to save this scene, and I'm going to do that by going Project New, and the project is going to be based upon that soldier. So on my desktop, the soldier, and I'll just choose that. I'm not going to make any defaults or anything like that. I just want to accept it. I don't want a bunch of folders interrupting it. So now it's just going to be able to see stuff within that folder a little bit easier. So when I do stuff like this, um, let's see, window, rendering editors, hypershade. And then I open up a finder window. the soldier. I'm going to go to the textures plane and I'm going to import these textures in just the tiffs. And later on we're going to switch these out to PNGs which are a little bit web more web friendly. And of course it wants to be that way. So I'll do that. There we go. Okay, now the fun thing. The fun thing is I would lock yourself into the front view. Now remember, it's a 2D side scroller, so what really is front after all? Uh, front is going to be front, which is side. And another thing is check your coordinates. Um, what I want to do is produce everything on a positive X that makes sense within a script. So. I want the character to come at me from, you know, the normal side scrolling character is we move from left to right, right? Uh, for problematic purposes later on, you know, for the debugging things, I would say I want to work in a positive X formation. And because in Unity, that's, that's just the nature of the beast, a positive X equal to negative X. I don't want to script a bunch of negative X things. I would r rather use uh, vector three right then negative vector three right, if that makes sense. All right, now let's go into here. And let's go into polygons and make ourselves a plane. And just so we can make a perfect plane, let's go into create polygon primitives and take interactive creation off. That way when we make a plane, it's a plane. Okay, I'm just going to scale this up a little bit and then rotate it. And then we're going to reduce it down to its lowest common denominator, which is one. This, this, this game is going to be run on all textures. There's no going to be polygons in this. I mean, the polygons are going to be there, but it's like, what, four? Okay, so here we go. Now, I got a character, and what I want to do is upscale this. Normally, I would say use your Unity grid script, but there's problematic things with the Unity grid script, I noticed. Like, one, you can't see your orthographical views. So I would say make the character huge, because that's what it's going to be in Unity if you make it huge. And if you make it the same size as the grid, here in the default Maya, um, it'll be so small that you'll have to upscale it anyway. Does it matter? No, because I'm going to make this character very universal, and therefore he will be able to be scaled, no problem whatsoever. But just a disclaimer. All right, here's how it works. Uh, hit six on the keyboard so I can see this, and also I want to be able to see uh, high quality render. And then what I'm going to do is mount this texture, so I got to make a material for it. Okay, somehow I did a play blast and I don't want to play blast. There we go. Get rid of that. It's memory intensive. So three materials. Okay, and what you use as materials doesn't really matter. I like staring at blends or at Lambert's because when it comes down to it, uh, they don't have any shine to them. So I'm going to make three of these. Lambert 1 I can't mess with, but Lambert 
two, three, and four I can. So I'm going to label these uh, soldier one. Heavy naming conventions. Uh, the more you name stuff here, the better off you will be in Unity. Trust me. Take the time. Do that. So here's Unity 1. When I want, or Soldier 1, I want to click and drag with the middle mouse button and go to color. This one's 2. Same thing. Oop. This one's 2. Color. This one's three, color. So Soldier 3 has Texture 3, and etc. cetera, and so far. That way they all match all the way through. And what's nice about this right off the bat is we're going to have all the transparency show up. So click and highlight your object and assign material to selection, and then hit 6 on your keyboard and you should see the character. Okay. Also, to see the transparency, all you have to do is now click and drag him down again and then mount him under the transparency feature. Does this matter in Unity? Absolutely not, but here in Maya, if you want to see the transparency, and we're going to have to see it, uh, we're going to need this step. Also, you can click and drag this one to here and assign it that way too. All right, so there's our character. All right, now that we got our textures in, um, what I want to do in the next video is show you how to align the textures up, and then we'll put some bones in the character and start moving them around as we go on.